future um, be able to uh, competently and very adequately champion teaching, learning and research activities. So this momentous task of actually transforming and growing our academic leadership um, can only really be achieved um, by encouraging younger academics to embrace the challenges and continue to skillfully carve their careers as future, uh, well, as future academics. So with that background, the second session or the second of the two sessions today will be presented by Professor Paliswa Nongongu um, and her presentation will specifically reflect on her academic journey, highlighting the importance of developing a research niche as well as maintaining visibility in our academic um, environment, our academic sphere. So Police has got a um, has got sort of a very extensive CV, but in short, she's a full professor in environmental analytical chemistry um, in the Department of Chemical Sciences here at UJ. Um, she also holds the Saatchi Chair in Nanotechnology for Water. Um, in fact, she was the youngest tier one um, academic Saatchi chair in South Africa. Um, she holds an NRF rating and her scientific career has been really dedicated to environmental analytical chemistry, um, which, which with the aim to really develop sample preparation methodologies using porous nanostructured materials. I'm reading that. I failed chemistry twice, so I'm not my chemistry is definitely not my strong point. Um, but it links to absorbents for monitoring various pollutants in wastewater and natural water. So I think across her career, she's really dedicated a lot of her time to environmental management and securing water for the future. I mean, we all know that, that the next world war will be around water and that water is probably our most scarce commodity. Um, her research career includes several um, prestigious fellowships and awards most recently the NSTF award. So with all of that, Poliswa really is a worthy speaker today in this forum. Poliswa. Uh, good morning, colleagues. Uh, I'll share some few slides just to, 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 to have my um, introduction, but mostly what I'm going to share is going to be some blog sort of a speech which uh, people, they can ask me a question in between if they would like to ask. But for in order for everyone to know who Piliswa is, I think it's important that uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is to introduce myself. And because I, I don't just became a professor at University of Johannesburg, but I started somewhere. I come from a place. So that's what I'm going to share with you first. And one of the reasons that I, I will tell you why I have to start there, you will then understand. I should not tell you now, but as I present my slides, you will, you will, I hope you will understand why I have to start with telling you who I am and where I come from. Can everyone see my, see my slides? Can uh, yes, see my we can slides? see it. Yes, we can. Okay. It's on it, something that needs to me. Okay, my computer is old, so it will take some time to respond. All right. Just bear with me. It has some challenges now.
uh, are they visible? Yes, we can yes, see them. Yes. Oh. All right. Um, so basically, what you are going to hear from me today is my journey, like as in my academic journey. So it will include my childhood. And one of the reasons why it has to include my childhood is because things I do today, they are actually informed by my, my childhood. And then I also talk about my school days, which are very interesting, and the university time, including now me being a professor at the University of Johannesburg. So it's, it's often, uh, most of the time, it's very difficult to talk about yourself and your thoughts. It's something that it's not easy to do, but it's very easy to say something about something else, someone else. And that's me. For me, when, it, when I'm asked to talk about myself, I actually freeze because I, I sometimes I don't know what to say. But I find it, um, I, I was happy to be invited to be here because these are the rare chances that, that we get in our lives whereby you can actually given a chance to reflect about the, your journey, but at the same time, trying by all means to, to inspire somebody else or to share a message to somebody else. So today I will attempt to describe my academic path that I'll say I'll attempt because I'm not sure if I'll do justice. And also the things that I want to talk about is things that you cannot find in my CV. That actually you will never find in my CV unless I say I talk about them. And why, why did I choose to say that? It's because some of the aspects that I'll talk about might be helpful to somebody else who's listening or to a student who happened to find uh, this talk and listen to it, which then it will, it will show that anyone can do it. And anyone, we can all be professors and we can all be uh, full professors before the age of 40. <laughs> and um, yeah, but uh, also it's very important to, to, for, every, for all of us to learn that no one is perfect, even the professors. We are all learning and this learning take us to, to be in the professors, to take us to be the professors that we are. So, first of all, where I was born, um, I was born in Flexter. I actually make sure that I find a map that has flex stuff because every time I tell people about flex stuff, they have no idea what I'm talking about. So flex stuff is a small town in Eastern Cape, which is almost in the coastal area, but not also almost in the inland. It's 47 kilometers away from the sea. But for us, we always take it as very close to the sea as compared to Johannesburg. And uh, I was born by uh, 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 my father and my mom. My father was the one that was working at home. He was working at sugar cane in the south coast of of, of uh, uh, KZN. And my mother was a stay home mom. She never worked. And uh, so during my childhood, I was very skinny, you know. And I want you to very to listen very carefully because I have a question for the audience. <laughs> I was skinny. I was short. I was shy, I'm still shy by the way. And, but I had some bit of a talent when it comes to math and science, but also to sport. I played sport. And one thing that my parents were expecting from me was to study and to work hard at school. Actually, they did not expect that from me alone. They expect us from, for both, for all of us. It was my sister and my brother at that time, so three of us. So my father was one person that um, loved school. If I can just give you a brief about my father, just two minutes. My father went to school and did standard two as many times as he can. Not because he was failing, because he liked school, but they did not have money to take him further. So every time you wake up and go to school in the same class over and over again. So the disadvantage of that is that the teachers that taught me, taught my father. Now, as much as I have pressure at home of doing well, everyone will tell me how my father was, the behavior he had. So we had to be the very good kids when you are in class so that because it's going to, the reference will be my father. 
your father was like this. So we tried by all means to try to be like him, but we couldn't because it's not possible. But his perseverance when he come to school, it's something that caught me thinking most of the time. Although I was young, but I used to ask, why would you go to standard two so many times? But one day he explained to me and said, he was hoping that one day he can proceed, but he didn't. So now he told us that he expects us to go further because he couldn't, but that was fine. But unfortunately, my father passed away when I was 10 years old, which was very interesting. Because How was it interesting? Because that was the end of me being a child. You know, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying, but it, it's, it's, it, that was the end of being a, a child. Now we have to, I have to think, what can we do to help my mother? And at that time, I was 10 years old. Now, just to give you a break. Uh, my computer. I have a question for the audience. Okay, now I want people to guess which spot was I good at. I said I played sport. And I remember I said in my childhood I was skinny, short. Those two will give you an idea what exactly I was playing. Uh, why? Okay, something is very funny with my computer today. Okay, these are the list of sports that uh, were, were in my uh, junior school. So I need one person in the audience. And if somebody can help me with the hands, I can't see the hands because I, I'm seeing the screen. Just to, I need somebody to, to guess which one of these. I did not play one, I played two. Okay, Benito, I'm looking at these lots of postings in the comments. I'll tell you what they're saying. Okay. Um, 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 okay, uh, uh, rugby. No, that's not an option. I think that was before you put it up. Netball, okay. run. Netball, netball, lots of netball, lots of running, uh, athletics. I'm, um, I'm going to go with soccer also. There's two or three options for soccer. Okay. Uh, netball and athletics. No one seems right. to think that, yeah. How many people said soccer? I, I said I soccer. Actually, and there's a few I was actually others. very good in soccer and softball. <laughs> I've never There wasn't played. any softballs there, yeah, so that's a... I've never played netball because my sister was my competitor, so I did not want to be compared to her. So I decided to play soccer. And I played softball. Uh, softball, I played it when I was in high school because I was a bit lazy now. Athletics was very interesting because... So one did I put athletics is because at school, no one actually knew what sport I'm good at. They all look at my tininess and my short my height and then they thought i can run 100 kilometers i can do relay no matter how i try to tell them i can't run they always choose me to be in the team i promise my team was always failing because they never gave me a chance to say i can't run because my sister was a bit uh, bigger than me she was an in, in athletic but i couldn't run and but everyone when he sees me they'll see this person that can run and what did I learn from here is that in some cases, even in research, when we have students, we look at students and assume, but we do not actually engage with them and understand. For me, I find it, this, this lesson helped me to also, when it comes to giving student um, pro, uh, projects, because when we give the student projects, we assume that that's what they, maybe they see their future in. And then we give them. But what I've learned is that I don't need to assume. I need to sit with this person and, 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 and we discuss. Then we can have an agreement. Because I really suffered on the athletic. But I had to run because the teacher, whoever new teacher will come will see Pilis as a person that is part of the team. But I can't even deliver. So I think... That's one thing that I picked up. That's one lesson from my childhood that I've learned that I'm using right now in my research that when it comes to people, don't assume, please have some discussion with the, pe the person, understand so that you can be able to allocate 
uh, at, uh, something that fits the person than just to give the person a, a project or something. And this is applicable to research. That's what I do for my research. So now, after my father passed away, I had to look for a job. Remember, I'm a village girl. Né? And who can think what would be a job for a village girl? Do we have any suggestion? Anything someone can think of? Uh, Betin, do we have any? We have. Uh, we've got farming. Okay. I would also have thought something along, yeah, lots of fun, but maybe cleaner, okay. domestic work. Okay. Okay, interesting. Okay. Mechanic? Oh, there's a, there's a thinking, not I know, there were no cars. Well, okay, mechanic. that cannot be. There were no cars. First thing was to fetch water for teachers. You know, teachers, they are educated, so they can't go to the river. So that was my first job. I actually went to one of the teachers, what was, was a standard two, which is grade four teacher, and asked, do you need somebody to fetch water for you? And he said, yes. So what lesson did I learn here? Is that when you need something, you don't wait for people to come to you. You know what you need. You go to the person. Similar to our research, especially when it comes to collaboration. You know what you would see your research to be at. So don't wait. Are they, some, there are very rare situations that the person on the other side knows what you want. You are the one that knows. So you go for the, you talk to people. Yes, sometimes you'll get rejections. Sometimes you'll get, sometimes you'll get positive results. But here, all my teachers were really, maybe they were sympathizing with me, but they gave me the job. The next one was to make um, muddy bricks. That's how in the villages then we used to make houses. So this one that requires skill. It looked very simple, but you need a lot of thinking. Uh, Money-wise is a less pay. Job-wise is the one that has a lot of work to do because when somebody wants to build, they will tell you this is a place where I want to make my house. So you need to think, okay, I need to dig for the soil. I need to fetch water. I need to find grass. So there is an ingredients that make it to be strong. And you don't need to make it to be wet because if it's wet, it's going to break. If it's too hard, it's not going to form a nice shape. So you need to really, you know, when you're in the kitchen making the cakes, that's the kind of work that you do. But I did it in any case because that's what I could pay my fees for using. So here, patience is what you learn. You learn a lot of patience when you're doing that because sometimes you think you are done making the mud and you realize the mud is too wet, so you need more soil or there is no, not enough water and that water, no one will fetch it for you. You fetch it yourself. The other one was to go to the bush and get the grass. So in the Eastern Cape, we have a very... Uh, a lot of these houses where we have a grass that make, we use the grass. So I used to go and fetch the, gra the grass for people who want to build their houses. They are, they are on the wealth so that I can get some money. This one was the most paying yet very risky because we are almost in the coastal areas and there are a lot of snakes and yeah, there's a lot of things that happens, but that's what I we also did. That's with the jobs that were available at that time. And I did this when I was 11 years old. The other one was to fetch wood. So you can see all of them, they have a lot of outdoor, not necessarily in the indoor. So in my childhood, it was less in the house, more outside. But when I look back, I've realized that I've learned a lot from all the activities that I've got from the job that I did. It doesn't end here. We would go into people's fields. So farming was correct, but I didn't do much on that one. But the other nice thing that was, was very important, and the other thing that was very important here that I wanted to note is that I did this while I'm also going to school. So in these jobs, there was a morning job and there was an afternoon job. 
can somebody tell me which one would be would fit to be a morning and which one would be an afternoon? I'm looking, I'm waiting for people to post things. Fetching water morning. Yes, that was the morning job. So that one will make us wake you because I, I hate to be late, by the way. Being late is not my thing. So I would never be late from school. I don't want to be late from school. So we wake up at two o'clock, go and fetch water, come back, prepare to go to school. And the line was long. So waking up at two was not necessarily means you are going to be number one. Chances are there were people that came before you. And they don't come with one bucket because that's only one source of water that we get water from. And that source of water during the day, the cows and the pigs and everyone else and every animal that you can think of, they come to the same stream. So you have to wake up early so that you can get the best water that you think, you know. So you wake up and when you go there, you don't go with one bucket, you go with two to four. Now, it, depending on how many teachers hired me on that week, I will have maybe four if it's four teachers. So that was a, a morning job. When I come back to school, I have other jobs that I need to do. And one thing that I've done then was I couldn't, there was no school work during my school time that was done at home because I did not have time to do school work at home. So if I have a homework, it's done at school before I leave I'll do the homework. And that had a, I would say, a negative impact on me right now as I work at UJ because I have a tendency of not, of um, although I come still come very early, but I have a tendency of what I've, I've started. I need to finish before I get home because I don't want to start job at home. I need to do something else when I get at home. Get get home, and sometimes that is not a, a healthy one because it means you might leave late, which is not really good. Okay, so now um, school time. Now. I had, I, this is where I was at school. My school was, I think 10 to 11, I don't know how many kilometers, I, I wish to go back and measure, but it was a lot of kilometers away from my home. My home was somewhere, and the, where the, 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 uh, this yellow starts, that's where my home was, and the school was somewhere there. So what is important is, what I, if, I want you to think of, to, to take note of, I crossed two rivers. And we to for me to take to get to school, it takes me two hours to go to school. So those are the two rivers. And this is a now a more to show the rivers where they are. So what you see, we will move nicely from a road. And uh, it's, a, a, it's a gravel road. Then we have to branch and get to the bushes. Now it's look nice. Then it was a forest. Now, because people, they use it to build their their houses, it's it's no longer a forest, but it was a forest the time I was going to school. So this is the first river, which is the biggest river. And then we walk to the bush. The good thing is in summer, the, 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 the grass was as high as my height. So you wouldn't, you will see when the grass moves, that is somebody who's moving in between. And here it was me and my cousin, only the two of us was coming from this area to that part, far area to go to school. And why did we go there is because we heard that there is a very good science teacher. So now because we went to that school just to get that the, the, the science that they have a very good science teacher, so we followed. There was a high school which was five minutes away from home, but there was no good science teacher. So what made us to go there is because I know that I'm good in math and science, so I need to go to a school that will, I'll be comfortable with it and it will give me what I'm good at. So we used to work. Now what was very interesting and why did I illustrate this? This is the biggest river, but it was very easy to cross. There is no bridge. If you ever watch news of Eastern Cape kids, um, drowning, going to school. I was one of them, but I never drowned in the biggest river. I drowned here. And I was coming from school. We were writing geography, that was 20, 2003. It was geography, the last paper of geography. When we, it rained when we were at school and when we came back, because now this place has a lot of uh, floods, 
it's it's a uh, flex there's a lot of rain uh, but it floods a lot when it rains so this small river which is here got full and we thought it's an easy thing there was no other way to go home by foot unless we'll go a longest way by a car which we could not afford so we couldn't do that so we assumed that nothing everything is fine when we get here we see that the river is full but we want to go home because the village we are we are going to school to it has not it, it's we know no one we only go there for school and it's very far from our village so we first we hoped you know she said we took a risk and say we know how to swim and by the way i don't know how to swim but that day i was sure that i know how to swim i lo and behold we drowned both of us but the good thing is in the village there is always people so there was a man that was waiting for us according to him because he know that he will see us then he called the whole village and then we were rescued but the the the, the 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 most interesting part is although we drowned and we were rescued in the following day we went to school same route I don't know if we were hoping for the better results or what, but now we had plans. When we were going home, we did not have plans. We had we said we are going to take the risk. But when we came, we all we sat down. We planned on how we are going to cross the river because it's still raining. By the way, the plan work. The, our plan work. So, but what do I take this when I take it to my research um, career is? Sometimes we do something with that confidence that is going to take us somewhere and it take us nowhere. Instead, it's maybe we get embarrassment or we fail dismally. And then in most cases we run because we had a very bad experience. But what I learned from that day is that if you sit back and check, where did I make a mistake? For instance, where did we make a mistake? We went to a place that is deeper and the water runs faster, meaning that it's easy to sweep us. But now when we planned on how to cross the river, we were able to, sorry, we were able to plan and say, okay, let's go to a place where the river is not very fast, but we can be able to put some wood and walk on the block, the, the wood, and go to and go to across the river and we that was a plan for the rest of the year because it was a metric year when that happened and uh so those things is things that when i sit back and start looking at my research kind of like wow certain things to someone might look very hard or but to me they actually make who piliswa is today so what did I learn from my childhood? First, multitasking. You know, my many jobs taught me that I can do many things at once. I still multitask, by the way, even now. Time management, it was for, for the high school, it was important that we are there at seven o'clock. So we had to make sure that we wake up earlier and go to school so that at seven o'clock we are at school. Also, the the importance of family. Certain things I did because I loved my family. Taking risks, crossing the river while it's full, and finishing what you have finishing what you have started. But uh, okay, sorry, finishing what you have started is something that has taught me a lot of lessons. That no matter how many times you fail in between. But it's very important to finish what you have started. So that's basically sums up uh, my childhood plus the the the, the school work, the, like the school life. Um, I don't know if there is anyone want to have a comment before now. I start to go to the university, which almost all of us we are familiar with. Yeah, yeah. Uh, comments in the chat box. Just saying that some people here in the audience actually identify with your story because it's very similar to their story. Police one then just um, one or two comments also um, thanking you for sharing it. Um, 
I'm picking up uh, the importance of early socialization in shaping our careers and our future. Um, yeah. So right. just, I think, yeah, some very positive comments. Thank I you. Think what we can also do is if people want to say something, I mean, perhaps just if this is um, flexible, if you're okay with it, please. So people can no, also yes, perhaps yes. just unmute and, and come in. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm really, uh, it's, it's, it's going to be okay with me because sometimes it's very difficult to to comment on something that you spoke about before on the first slide or something. Yeah, but anytime when somebody wants to make a comment, it's it's very, it, I, I'm, I'm fine with that. So now, after my drownings and every other thing that I've told you about, um, I think the one thing that uh, actually made me to look forward. And one person was, why did I do all these things? <clears throat> okay, let me get some water. It's because um, I think most of the time I'm very grateful with my very interesting childhood because it forced me to look forward, not to look at the situation at home. And I can tell you that the last time I would mention age was when I was 10 years old. Then I'll be happy to tell you I'm 10 years old. But after that, there is nothing to me that I always relate to age. And I have my reason that I won't explain here. But uh, so in most cases, in anything that I do, I hardly put an age in it. And I don't want to put an age in it because if I put an age in it, it will make me to be stagnant, wait for a certain time to do certain things. So I, I, I don't have an age in anything. I always would say, next step, this is what I'm going to do. And I don't put a timeline on, I want to do it when I'm 40. I want to do it when I'm 55. No, uh, it's just, I want to do it. So, but one thing also that I learned from my childhood is that it doesn't matter how old you, you are. When your mind says you're going to do it, you will do it. So I then moved to, I then had to- so, so I'm going to interrupt you quickly, but I think afterwards um, you need to look at the recording and you know, just to look at, at some of the comments that people are actually putting into the chat, okay. just how amazing, you know, and how inspiring they see you. So, I mean, just sharing, I think it's just, it's so inspiring and it's, um, so I mean, just, I'm, I'm not going to read everything because I think okay. it would be important that you actually look at it no, afterwards I, and just look at the that. chat afterwards, please. Okay, I'll definitely do that. So then when, because now, when I went to high school, really they had a very good uh, science teacher who happened to have a BSc in chemistry. Now you will see that from the teacher, we know our teachers and really inspires us because that's the only people that were educated in front of us, especially me, because my mother was not educated. My father repeated standard too many times. So the teacher was the next person to learn from. So the teacher was more strong in chemistry than in, in, in physics, but he teach both. And in my high school, we the disadvantage of my high school now, we did not have a math teacher, only the science teacher. But the good thing for me is, as I said, I had a talent in math. One will ask why I did, never did math, but I think that talent ended somewhere. I don't know where. But um, so he, he, he actually had to make sure that when we do chemistry, we imagine things. We, because we had no lab, this is the rural area we're talking about. He would make us to imagine titration and understand it very well when the color changes from colorless to pink. And we will know it changed, although there is nothing that says it changed, but imagine, we would imagine that. And so he had a lot of influence on the choices of the career that we are choosing. So, but for, for me, he always has thought I would be this good medical doctor because I was also good in biology. So he, he had this medical doctor. So he would tell um, almost everyone what would they, they could do. Then listening to the teacher, remember he's, he's more educated than me. I then applied for a for medicine in UKZN and then the next one was chemical engineering. 
there were many type of many courses that I applied for, but I did not apply for chemistry. I applied for biological sciences. In case I'm not accepted for medicine, I can do biology for the first year. Then in the second year, I go to uh, medical school. But that did not happen. When I get to University of, of Zulu Natal, I actually had cold feet of everything that I ever chose in my life. Everything. I looked at the chemical engineering. I said, I can't even draw a line. How can, be an, how can I become a chemical engineer? And fortunately, at that time, the teacher escorted us to, to University of uh, to UKZN. And when he gets there, he says, sometimes you choose things because they might give you money, or sometimes you choose things because it's what you lack. Like. And that changed everything for me. And I told, actually, you were the one that was with us choosing the courses, but now you are the same person that is saying we need to choose things that we like sometimes. And I was like, I'm going to go and change and choose chemistry. But even today, I don't want to lie to you. I'm not regretting why I chose chemistry, because one of the things that as we cross the rivers, the big river that I showed you before had, um, it was when the the spring is dry in the village. It was the nearest, nearest river that we could go and fetch water. Now there were activities in that particular river. First, there was a deep, you know, where they, the, the cow go and the cows get there and dip themselves and whatever. That was the first thing that was happening. Secondly, it was the place where we do our washing. Now to get fresh water, you need to go a little bit uh, upstream of the of the activities and get water. But the challenge is in the upper stream, there was another dip and another activity that is happening. So what struck me when I was doing grade 12 was, now that I know that chemistry we can use to know what is in there. So I will always ask myself, does the dip, all the chemicals that I use in the dip of the keko and everything, does it affect the water? What is in the water? But now I do not know if, how can I answer that until I get to my first year in chemistry where I did a titration of vinegar. And I realized, oh, chemistry can actually tell me what is in there because I was able to get five, that vinegar contained 5% of acetic acid. And then my, my aim then was I would like one day to be able to do my water research, the water and know what is in our water in the village, what exactly we are drinking, because at some seasons it will affect the, the water would affect the skin of the little ones when they go and 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 swim in the river. They will come back with a lot of fresh, which means there is something in the water that affects them. So that one what well, that was a question in back of my mind, but the main the other main thing was I need to finish my degree and work for my mother. So I had two challenges. It's important to work for my mother, but it's also important to do what I would like to do. So I continue enjoying my chemistry since. Uh, come standard, uh, come um, the third year last year, I'm supposed to look for a job. I promise, I, I, I'm tell, I told my mom I'm going to look for a job. I promise her I'm going to look for a job. But when I look, I was like, well, if I look for a job, what exactly do I know? Except that I know a little of more of everything that I've done. But do I really, am I ready to go to the industry and work? And what will be I doing? And that made me not to apply that year and go to and do honors. When I do honors, I enjoyed uh, now the advanced chemistry that we are doing. And I had a project that was looking at plants using a, a, one of the analytical instruments. But it was a nice project, but I never enjoyed that project. And that project almost made me to stop, not to continue with research. But I've learned from, you know, when we have these discussions, I think that the presentations in the departments are very important sometimes and inviting everyone, inviting the, 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 the standard, the, no, the honor student in the third years, it can actually make them to learn from us as professors, as uh, senior lecturers and lecturers on, why, on what path they can follow. So this other time there was a presentation and it happened that the, the professors and every staff will tell us what is their interest. And then in that point, I've learned that uh, 
Professor Angela, who was my supervisor, is actually working in water. And I was like, because now I think this is an opportunity for me to know the water in Flagstaff, what it contains. I think I'm not applying for a job again. I'm going to do masters. And the promise now I made to my mama was I'm, I'm going to be a tutor and I'm going to do every job I get, but I'll continue with school. So then being a tutor, it, it's not something that you just get, so you need to avail yourself. And sometimes it's very difficult to give a master's student um, a tutoring post because what if they don't finish their master's? So I actually went and asked to be a tutor for uh, extended program. And I was, it was granted. And uh, because of my skills that I had when I was 11 years old, I, was, I managed to do both my master's and do the, the tutoring, which then helped me to not to have that much pressure to say, I need to work. I need to work for my mother. I need to make sure that at home, they have a better life. Then I continued and it really, the project was very interesting, but I did not have a chance to go back to Flagstaff and get the water, but it, I could do must, I could get something. And for PhD, I, got, I then got a bursary from Sasol. What was very interesting is that from the first day I started to do chemistry, I've been applying for Sasol bursary. And I asked myself, when I get the Sasol bursary, when I'm doing a PhD, what was wrong with my grade 12 all along? Because they still wanted my grade 12. <coughs> How, what changed? But uh, I, I, I thought everything happened for a reason. Maybe this was a reason. It was, I was supposed to make sure that I work hard so that at the end of my studies, I can actually say one day, who oh, I got the dream bursary that I've been dreaming about, which was the Sasol bursary. Then the PhD, now my supervisor was supposed to move from UKZN to UJ. Yo, tell you, it was a struggle because I'm so used to UK today now. I also have this uh, part time tutoring job. So it means that if I go to UJ, I leave that, then I go to a place that I have no idea about. You know, remember, it was also another adjustment to move from Flagstaff to Devon. Now it's another adjustment to move from Devon to Johannesburg, and everyone says, everything about Johannesburg and for me the village in me is still in me it's not even yet out so it was very scary move but I took that risk and I came to Johannesburg uh, for the first two years every talk I will say to anyone who meets me I wish I was at UKZN and I let I really lived in the past not looking at the positive things that I could get in, uh, in the University of Johannesburg but after two years, I told myself, there's no turning back. I'm not going back to Devon. This is where I am. So let me just make use of it. So what happened in my PhD? I worked so hard because I really wanted to leave Johannesburg. I make sure that I finished my PhD in two and a half years. I used to be in the lab from six to 10 o'clock in the lab. And I was working at APK. So I was the first one to take a bus at DFC to APK make, because I really wanted to leave. Uh, I wouldn't stay here. It was very far from my family uh, to go home. I had to think when I was in Devon, I wouldn't think much because it was not far. So anytime I could go home, Joburg is not anytime. I need to think because there is a lot of cost involved. But I think also that pressure helped me to work very fast to finish my PhD and go home and, and have time with my family. But uh, after the 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 third year, I was already getting used to be here. But I had to make a choice whether I choose to work for Sasol or I choose to look for a job. That was risk number three. I told myself I will never be happy if I go to Sasol, but I will have money. But I asked myself, do I need money or I need to be happy? Then I said to the person that my the, the manager that was doing the passages, I said, I think I choose to be to Sasol to release me. Uh, I would look for an academic job that can because I think I enjoy research more than um, being in a in a private company or in a private sector. 
And at that time there was no job. So, but I, I was hoping that NRF will give me a postdoc, which I got the funding and I spent time at UJ just doing uh, my postdoc. And uh, with a blessing from God, I got a job in 2015 at UJ. And when I get a job, I think all the energy that I have from the from the from my childhood all the way to the last time in, I did my PhD came in 2015 because I had a lot of energy. Why did I hear the? Why did I say that? My first I first time being a lecturer, I had four students, two masters, two PhD. Um. <laughs> It was one of the things, and I think most people, they would ask why. And that's another thing, people, as what you realize is that most of the time we assume we don't ask. <clears throat> For me, it was easier to take two PhD and two masters because when I was doing masters, Prof Ngila needed somebody who is who will oversee the lab. And no one raised the hand. I raised my hand. And the, one of the reasons I did not raise my hand first is because the people that were in the lab were much older than me. But at that time, for once, I considered myself as a young person. Then I sat back and I wait for one of the people that are old. They were When I said they were old, they had their families. So I was like, this is going to be easy to oversee the lab. But none of them, I don't know if they were scared or what, but it took us two days, no one decided. Then I like, it looked like there's no one want to take the responsibility. So I took the responsibility. So what was the responsibility of take, uh, looking after the lab? Was to make sure that the chemicals are, are, um, are, are there, make sure the lab is clean. Also make sure that Professor Angela does not get a raw draft of any report. Somebody need to read the report. Somebody need to make sure that the report is Somebody need to make sure that the report is at least some of the things are, 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 you know, they are polished up. And then just imagine how can a first year master's polish a PhD uh, report? But uh, I actually had to sit down and read a lot of papers and see how the papers are being uh, uh, written and how can I help my fellow um lab mates to make sure that Prof Miller gets something that is a structure. So that's where now everything started because that trained me a lot. From that time when I took that, 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 that task, I took it from masters all the way when I was a postdoc, I was doing exactly the same thing. When I started at UJ, I told myself I'm actually ready to supervise students because if I've done for all the group members, the, everyone in the group, what will stop me to have to do that? And I think that was a very good um, training for me, which I almost did not take it. But uh, because there was no one who wanted to take the, 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 the task, I had to take it. And it was a very good a foundation for me to become a researcher. And now, because of that, because sometimes uh, I think I was very, excited to have a job and I thought because of those duties I can be able to supervise masters and PhD and as something that I just starting my job but it, it, it really worked for me because they all finish in recorded time and what was very important or very interesting was the energy that I have my first master's student took one year to finish their masters and which was very motivating to me and I think that motivation is a motivation that I still have today because also it's it's a weakness that I have because we, when I look at the group we had at that time, I, I also thought I can actually have a big group and my weakness is a big group. And I, I, I always have more than five students in my lab or more, sometimes more PhD, less masters. And because I learned things during the, the time where I was working with Prof Nila, is that if you train a student and the student proceed to be your, your PhD student, you actually have less work to do. 
as compared to taking new students more every time because they need to learn the system. So for me, the blessing that I have at UJ is that most of my PhD students were always my master's students. So when they do my master, the next thing they always would talk about with me is I would like to do my PhD with you. And then for me, then it becomes less job because when this when we start the first discussion, the, if the first thing that I'll tell the student, you know my expectation. We work together for masters and don't expect that what I've done for you for masters, like what I trained you in the masters, I'll do it in the PhD. I'll train you on a PhD on things that are new, not the things that I've done before, which then um, I would say helped me enjoy my supervision work. Yes, sometimes it has a lot of challenges and sometimes there is a lot of sleepless nights, but I always say I'm used to this. I'm used to wake up in the morning very early. I'm used to sometimes leave, go home late because that's what I would do when I do my afternoon jobs when I was young. I would go home seven, then rest and sleep and go and, and wake up and go to school in the following day. But also those like one thing that I've learned is that there is no one who knows you better than anyone. You know yourselves. And sometimes we listen a lot to what people say. Remember what I said? Everyone thought I am a runner. But when you look at my body, I was a runner. But sometimes it's very important to actually know exactly what you are, what you are good at and do it best. And um, the other thing that uh, setbacks that you will get in all the life, you know, I, you know, when I tell this story, there are things that I don't tell, you know, uh, but there are a lot of things that happen in between. For instance, you have people that have not, they cannot, they don't believe in you. And in most cases, human nature will take those and use them. Uh, the one aspect that I did not show there in my slides, what I learned from my childhood was, talking less and do more. For me, one thing that I've learned when I was when I was young, you know, the, our age mate will tell me straight and say, you are wasting your time. You can't go to the university because your family is poor. So what I used to say is to keep quiet, say nothing and make sure that I work hard. Even in my academic life, I get those, but I say less and do more because that's what I can do. And even when people don't believe that I can do it, if my brain says, if my mind says, Piliswa, you can do it, I do. Some will ask, okay, Piliswa is, has uh, um, do a lot of uh, awards and, you know, one thing that I told myself was because I know if I ask a next person, do you think I qualify for this uh, award? There are chances that will be, we always don't give feedback, positive feedback, but we tend to say, oh, I think, you know, maybe you, after you have graduated two PhDs, you can try. So what my, learn, my, my lesson was, I need to hear from the person those who are doing the awards, when they say, tell me and say, until you have graduated this number of students, then you qualify. So what I do, I try. I, I put myself there and say, OK, I'll try. And if if then I get a feedback, at least I have a feedback that I'm going to work on rather than getting a feedback that you are not even sure if it's a true reflection of who you are. So in most cases, as as a young researchers, we tend to get this, get a, a setback from other people and trust them more than we trust ourselves. So I think for me, taking sometimes risk helps. Uh, yeah, I do not, I drowned, but I do not die and I'm still alive. But uh, you need to make sure that you, 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 you understand yourself and you see yourself somewhere. And when you see yourself somewhere, you have your goals. Yes, it's nice to get the feedback from somebody, but not all the feedback will always be what, a good feedback. But sometimes 
it's good to say, OK, I got the feedback from one. Can I get a feedback two and a three and be able to see if I can get somewhere? And for me, that's what always take me. I uh, those who work with me in the department, they know that I am. Person that always with the students. Because they are the, they inspire me a lot. Their experiences inspire me and I learn a lot from them. And such that you can ask me randomly of any of my students, I'll tell you exactly what kind of a person and what you can expect from that particular student. Because one thing that I've told myself that as, a, as I'm in academia, what I'm going to invest in is to train students. And I'm not just going to train students, I'm going to, I want to train students that can be able to be like me one day, be able to stand, have those responsibilities. You know, what I get from the experience from Professor Angela is what I do in my lab. They all have responsibility of whatever. And this time I, I stopped uh, saying volunteer. When I see that some they don't volunteer, I make them to, to, be, to, to, be, to take uh, roles because at the end of the day, they are not going to be with me forever. They will go to another university. I'll be happy to, to see that the person that was in my lab is now something. For instance, I am very happy as we speak because one of the persons that I mentored when I was a PhD student, she was a PhD student also, but I volunteered to help the, that person and make sure that she finished a PhD. Today, she's an EHOD at UNISA. So every time when I look at her, I like, if I did not volunteer to actually become a supervisor who's not a supervisor, I hope you understand what I'm saying. I don't think she will actually finish the PhD or be where she is today. And I think sometimes we do, so we want to always uh, be help students because we want uh, to be either part of the paper or part of the supervision. In this case, I was not even part of the supervision, but I find it very I find it in me that I think because I know certain things and I've been in the game for a longer, although I was not long, but I think I can be able to assist others. And that has been my main aim, which led to the awards that I got. And they all, because the students that I work with, they're always willing to support me. And I'm trying by all means to also support them. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much, Felicia. Well, I think well, that is absolutely inspiring. inspiring. I mean, it's awesome. awesome. It's so it's nice so to hear other people's journeys. journeys. And then it and also, then also places a lot of who that person is into perspective. I mean, I've always seen you as a leader, as a very strong person. Um, and I think, you know, that's just absolutely reinforced after hearing your, your story. Um, I wonder if there are some people that want to maybe unmute and just talk ask questions um police well, but as i've said earlier i mean just please download and look at the chat box i don't know if you can see it now once no, i can see the chat box and i am really yeah you know you know by the way guys i'm i'm, I'm a cry baby so you can, when i read here i think i need to read you when i'm alone so that i can cry alone in my in my room um there is a hand, I think, just unmute. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, this is Elizabeth. And so, I, yeah, it's good that, uh, uh, Pilisa, you will go and cry alone. But, uh, you know, us not having the video, me not having the video on, it gave me the opportunity to appreciate the resilience, determination, everything, and cry as I'm listening to your story. And I was somehow asking myself, where, who is this? <laughs> who is this woman? Is she not Elizabeth? That's why when you asked about soccer, when you asked about sports, I was the first thing came to my mind. I was like, no, this person is probably Elizabeth. She must have played soccer. Okay. I, I, I don't have words to appreciate how you shared the story um, with, without saying that this is this is this is this is really important and it's uplifting and it's good 
that um, this was organized. And I think many of our students, they want to hear our stories. Yo, I, I just don't know where to start. I just had to say something. Um, I have a lot of things which I wanted to ask as you were talking. Perhaps I should ask a question with regards to when you were at KZN, how were you sending money, um, the little that you had? Because <laughs> this story is more like mine. So, yeah. Okay. Um, you know, I did not have a bursary, so I had NFSAs. And I think NFSAs at that time was paying uh, a, a certain amount, I can't remember correctly, but for two months. So if ever, let us let me just give a figure. I can't remember the exact figure, but if it was 900, it was 800, but it will be that amount for two, for two months. So for me, I would like, I'm going to take, although it's for two months, I'm going to take one, the one month money NFSAS and send it to my mother. I'll see myself around the, the other month, but uh, I think, um, one thing that I've never, uh, uh, that the one thing that made me to survive né, was because any money that I could have was always higher than that what I used to make when I was a child. So I could be able to manage 400 for two months because it was a lot. I did not need many things. I just needed to live. Yeah. It yeah, perhaps it is also good for for, for it, it was also good that you didn't understand or you didn't know what the word depression is because I, I didn't know what it means at, at, at my time. And um, I will end there and give other colleagues a chance. <laughs> Thank you. I think there is another hand that I, I can't see. The vocal. Uh, okay, th that is me. So I'm also I, I am I am such a cry baby. So I'm sitting here. I'm like I've got an event today. You should not spoil my makeup. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much for for sharing your story, uh, uh, Prof. Peliso. It is I am so empowered. You know, we we, we look at you uh, as I posted something on the chat. We look at you. We see the glory. We see the goodness of God uh, on your life, and we celebrate you. We are, we are, we, we are looking at you, and we're saying, "This is where we want to be." As a young, I mean, as a young woman in academia, and I just want to say thank you. Uh, thank you for thank you for sharing this story, this part of your life that, I mean, we don't know. And I said that we need to share. We need to hear more of these stories, so that when we, I always say that. Sometimes when you get to when you see all this story, it is more empowering to even know what has made this person to be where they are. So for me, this was oh, thank you so much for sharing. Uh, like I'm saying that I'm also a cry baby, but thank you so much for sharing. It's it's it is beautiful to to just uh, experience and see the glory of God in your life. Sorry, <laughs> but yes, thank you, <laughs> thank you so much, thank you very much. The T way. Thank you so much. Morning, everyone. So for me, I just want to say thank you so much, Prof, for sharing yourself. Um, for everyone, uh, Prof is my mentor, even though we are in different disciplines. So she's very welcoming. And um, I remember our first formal chat, I introduced myself and she did not say, who are you? I'm not in your field, so what do you want? She opened up and she shared her journey with me and she really inspired me. And today I'm out and I, I think I, I, I believe I know her more than what I presume I knew about her. And um, I just want to say, Prof, uh, your impact is awesome, is great. May you continue sharing yourself, may you continue blessing other people with your wisdom and your strength and your, all the qualities that you have and that you've uh, portrayed today in your presentation. It's quite inspiring and I wish you all the best. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I really appreciate all the comments. Um, yeah, I, I, I read the comments from the, the chat and I think uh, 
I stopped now. I will read them later so that uh, I don't cry. In the, I, can't, I don't cry live. No. I cry when I'm alone at home. Um, Police, I mean, I, th I do think, yeah, you know what? We should cry about stories like this, but we should, mm -hmm. more important, I think we should celebrate them. I mean, we should actually smile and be proud. So, I mean, it, it's a, it's heartbreaking stories, but it's, it's stories of, let me switch on my video. It's actually stories of survival. I mean, it's stories of, of people overcoming in spite of, um, I want to say hardships, but I don't know if it's really hardships. I mean, yeah, to think that you are the youngest tier one Saatchi chair when you got it. I don't know if it's still true or, or when you got it. I, <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, maybe when I got I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> As I, I mean, said, I hardly tap with the age thing, so unless I'm asked. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it is still an amazing accomplishment. Um, yeah, absolutely. But yeah, I mean, we sh we should cry, but we should we should smile, and we should actually be dancing around the fountain downstairs or wherever we are, because I mean, these are stories of these are incredible stories, and this is why South you well UJ South Africa and Africa are such an amazing place because these kinds of stories are here; they are nowhere. Um, you know, it's amazing when I, if I can share a bit with the Sachi, you know, when I, I applied for rating in 2018, I think, and in the rating, I don't know if it's still there, there was a question that, where do you, I, I don't like that question, by the way, the one that, where do you see yourself in five years, but I had to sit down and think about it. I'm like, what do I think, where do I see myself in five years? So in the five years, I had list of things. And the last thing in my list was, after five years, I would really like to become a Sachi. And I think one of the reasons I said that was when I look around, we're like, oh, the Sachi, people that are Sachi are a bit old. That was me. And I think it, you need, I, I, I did not know the requirements at that time. Then in 2019, uh, Dr. Nonquelo says, you are going to be a Sachi replacement. And I asked myself, I haven't done the after five years yet. It's just a, it was 2018. Now in 2019, I'm told that I'm going to be a replacement chair. But one thing that I celebrated, they, although sometimes I was always reminded that it's a replacement. For me, yes, I was a I was interim, not a replacement, the interim chair. You know, when I interim chair, it means that somebody else will take over. Even though sometimes you will like, it's an interim. Yeah, it's fine. But the fact remains, whatever I wished for, whether it was interim or it was a full search, but I've got it in 2019, which is a, a, a year or month later than what I've written for my, when I was doing um, my projection of the five-year career, which I, uh, uh, for me, even today, I always say I am very grateful for that because now it's out of my box. It's out of my. I've already ticked the box. It's it's okay. I'm happy. I've got what I wished for, and some. So it it actually yes, it came at a time I did not expect. So what I learned, what? every not everything comes at a time we are expected. Sometimes it comes earlier or later. We also manifest, and I think this is. I mean, what I'm taking away from you also is that, and I've always known it and believed it and lived it, um, we manifest what we believe, you know? So if we're positive and if we, if it's, it's how we see things, um, you know, a lot of what we, what's in our heads and we, we physically manifest by having that positive attitude, by working towards it. Um, you know, that there's a saying, I don't know if I'm making it up or if it's really a saying, but be careful what you wish for because it may just come true. And I mean, that's the point. Um, I see more hands, maybe. And then um, I've also seen, take a note before we leave, let's just all switch our videos on and then um, we can take a picture. Um, I think Megan, you guys, um, Kibi, Megan, you can come in and just also direct it. Um, but uh, later on, before we say love you, leave you, let's just take a picture. Um, Another hand. Sorry, I don't see who. There you go.
But I do think there was also another hand for a uh, um, for a question. Comment? It was Kibi earlier and now Tailo. Okay, thank you. Sorry, because I don't see it. It drops off my screen. <clears throat> Kibi, do you still want to speak? Uh, and actually, um, I just wanted to, to talk to that idea. I loved the idea of um, age as being limiting. And I think that that's so important because so many of us have these goals that say, oh, by a certain age, I want to do some. So sometimes time and age can be something that's so limiting. And I just love your approach to how you think about you know what you want to do rather and and what you want to achieve and what you think you're good at rather than actually saying by a certain time i have to do it so so this whole idea of time and the meaning of time is really really useful and i think something that many people can take lessons from but i mean your story is a story that i would want to share with every single student that comes in from you know from from your kind of from from the context you grew up in um, and other contexts. I mean, it's a story I really want to share with with my. Uh, I saw Angie said she wants to share it with her son. I would definitely share it with my daughters. You know, so I think it's just a story of hope. And and I think the one thing that really came to my mind, the one, the two words that came to my mind when I was listening to you was hope and courage. And and I think you kind of embody that. Uh, you know, in addition to other words like excellence and that kind of thing but hope and courage. And, and so thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think there was another hand. Tylo, I think Tylo, you can unmute and speak. Okay, thank you so, so much. Good morning, everyone. Um, for me, it's, it's the idea we recently spoke of, um, the idea of manifestation. I noted how in your story you spoke of um, when you pass through the river, you would ask yourself, is there a way of me actually determining what kinds of, what kind of elements, what kind of um, chemicals are in this water and what, what we're consuming and what leads to our children being affected with um, skin rash and all of that. So for me, it's, it's like a chain of events that led you to where you are today. And this idea of constantly reminding yourself that, you know what, regardless of what people are saying, I can actually accomplish this. And that idea of speak less, do more, that's a powerful idea. As I mentioned in the comments, and a group of my friends um, have that saying that, less ringers, dollar what you must. So that's, that's exactly what you do. Um, I'm a final year student in the B.Ed. Um, stream. And for me, attending such meetings and engaging in such talks is inspiring. And I see myself exactly where um, the doctors and the professors are. So please keep sharing these stories because we are listening and we are watching. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I don't. Are there any other hands? Um, Tyler, that's still your hand, I think. That's um, Elizabeth, Elizabeth, is that you? Yes, yeah, that's Elizabeth. I just want uh, to um, concur with uh, Tyler. And I wanted to ask uh, Prof. Piliswa, but it's no longer a question. It's just a comment about how our backgrounds or our experiences are influencing our choices tomorrow. Um, when she showed the bricks and asking herself questions about the river and the choice of being a chemist, um, I just reflected on my, uh, my journey and I realized that what I do today is what actually is, is actually influenced by what I did before. The, the bricks, is what I grew up doing, and I, I wanted to know how 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 come how come? And I used to ask my father, how come that it stays hard? And there are other experiences. Those bricks, after you 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 have them solid, you have to. Um, I don't know if Pilisa would agree with this. We you, we don't we didn't have the cement, no. but we we used to get the <laughs> the cow dough and then. 
<laughs> and the clay and then cement with our hands. I recall while I was busy um, cementing and decorating my home, um, some visitors came for a funeral um, because my, my home is not far from the graveyard. The, the gentlemen came and they found me doing the, right, the good things there. And they were like, what is this? But today, uh, when I look at that and your story, I remember very well that I was asking myself, I, are we doing it? But I know it will stick. And for it to stick, I have to choose the right, the right soil. You know, all those things. And today I tell, I, I, I tell myself, oh, my, my journey was that I, I became a physical chemist. At the end of the day, I became that material person who is asking about the properties of material. Why does it harden? Sure. I uh, know our stories um, and her stories, the, the influence is so much. Um, yeah, that's where we're coming from. Thank you very much, Prof. Felisa. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Can I also just speak a bit? I, I posted in the chat that I will share you uh, the video with my son who's in his matric now. And I usually tell them my stories. Um, and I, I am so excited that they will hear a story that is more or less similar from somebody else who has achieved so much, uh, like yourself, Prof. So I'm so glad we were able to convince you to do this session. I remember our first conversation with you and Megan, and I'm glad you accepted <laughs> this. And I mean, this is just one of those aha moments for me. Thank you, Pro. Yes, I know that I was not willing to do it, but I think I, the time you asked and the time it took, it actually prepared me to be able to say something. And for, I must say that for once, yes, uh, there were moments that my voice maybe was shaky, but, but for once um, today, I think, I, I, I cried once, but in most cases, I, I, I used not to finish my story. I would, I just can't finish it. But I think I appreciate that for this opportunity because somebody else, whether is not in the same situation as me, but you know, we learn by hearing I know I learn a lot from others. For instance, I learned to be to manage a a, a research group from my supervisor. I, you know, I, I learned certain things from her. Like I, from each and every person. For me, one thing I always choose is what can I learn from the experience that I've got, I, I've received from the even if it has nothing to do with my experience, but certain things that people how they do things. That's where I learn. For instance, if somebody is, is is presenting on how they 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 manage their research group, I always pick one thing or two. And I think stories like this or any other stories are very important to our lost students. I teach first years. You know, sometimes I feel very sorry for them when they have no idea why they are in the university. And the only thing I always tell them, be happy that out of 50,000 who apply to at UJ, we are one of them, we are a winner. So, it's, you know, we always, I always have to find something that will help this student at least to have some, you know, to be happy why they are at UJ instead of continuing a complaint. As some will say, I do not want this course, but I always think, if you did not want it, but you are here, you should be grateful that at least you are not at home. And I always tell my student that it's better to be at, in the university than to stay at home. For instance, uh, when the student does not get a job for us for after after honors, I always say it's easier. I know it's not a very good advice, but I always say it's easier to deregister than to stay at home until September and realize I don't have a job. But if you registered and wait for that job that you don't know when it will come, you will not regret that you're actually doing something, something that will build your career, something that will actually give you another degree. And I think the, these kind of uh, uh, talks, 
uh, and, and many more that will come, are also very important to both our undergraduate and our postgraduate students. Okay. Shall we, um, if more people want to switch on their, yeah, absolutely applause. If, um, if more people want to switch on their videos, then perhaps we can take a, a, a picture. Can we ask people to just switch on their cameras for like one minute so that I can just take a picture, please? Come on, guys. <clears throat> quickly, quickly. Please put your cameras on, colleagues. Maybe if we repeat it enough. Otherwise, we're going to call you out by name. Just, uh, just quickly. The more people that switch on their cameras, the smaller the pictures become, and the less you can actually see. You know, the the old age and the grey hair. So come it's on, we're okay. counting on you guys to switch it on. <clears throat> No, let's see where there's no such thing. There's no such thing. It, the picture's going to be small like this. this do it for Piliswa. The, the more we switch on, the smaller the picture becomes. Yeah, do it for Piliswa, everybody. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> nice. Please, please. Well, please. you do look amazing today. You said you had another function, right? Is it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Tebojo's magazine ready. Never mind, camera yeah. ready. <laughs> Otherwise, we all switch our cameras off and we just leave Tebojo and Pariswa on. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we just take with what we've got, Megan? Uh, yeah. yeah, just give me another second. You must say one, two, three, and then I smile again. A fifi. <laughs> Where's your camera? It's on. Look at my smile. Yes. I can see. <laughs> <laughs> but but what Pilisa doesn't know is next time you give me stories about your studies, I'm going to take you straight to her office. Yep. I'll help you, Gloria. Thank you, Angie. Cross <laughs> Tebucho, please help me. Uh-uh. Tebucho's on our side, not on your side. Uh -uh. Uh uh, the book was on my side. <laughs> Basil, switch on your video. Dustin? Have, have you got the picture? Yeah, not yet. yeah, I'm taking different views, Gloria. Lacquer. So, so, do you want to tell everybody when to smile and everybody okay. when to pull a silly face? Um, Just let me just open this thing again. Wow. If he's already pulling the fully silly face. <laughs> okay. That, is Everyone, that silly face smile face? now. You're trying to get the right smile. Okay. Yeah. Smile. I don't, I don't okay. Everybody face. smile. <laughs> Perfect. And go see Kaya. Now we will Eastern Cape. Kaya. And go see. Thank you so okay, much. Okay, guys, whilst we're taking Thank pictures, um, Kibi, Megan, if you want to say something, but um, basically we're done for the year now and we'll start this up again next year, right? Nodding, yep. nodding. Okay. Yep. Thank you very much for your time. I really do think this thank is you, a everybody. thing. Thank yeah. you, everybody. Thank you, Felice. Well, thank you, Felice. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-b